Hi everyone, this is Pradeep from Sydney. Once again, talking to you from a lockdown. We have been in lockdown for the last two and a half months and this is set to continue for yet another month. But hey, isn't that the new normal? We will be in lockdowns, all of us will be sitting at home while technology becomes more and more pervasive part of our life. Today, once again, as Executive Director Asia Pacific and CEO of Global Mindset, I present to you another thought leading session and, and some interesting thought leaders. Today we are going to talk about virtual production. Not that virtual production is something new and virtual production in filmmaking is yes, it's already making waves, but it is where it is reshaping content creation, whether it be sports, whether it be education and is that going to be the future in so far as content creation? And where are we in virtual production? Chaitanya, do you have some insights into where the industry is? And where are we headed towards? So, um, yeah, this is a good explanation, demonstration of... And Chaitanya, as uh, you are very fond of telling me, and as this slide shows that we are at roughly at about 1.5 billion dollars and we are headed towards you know roughly about 5 billion dollars in about 7 years but this absolute number doesn't tell me what I would like to know is that what percentage of total is it Chaitanya what are your thoughts on that um, so if you look at approximation of how much uh, all the money that's gone into producing content over the last year, it would be approximately about 12 to 15 billion dollars. Now, uh, it's hard to know that because not everybody releases actual cost of production. And there is, you know, some creative accounting that goes on in that. But uh, if you look at uh, simple, even if you look at say 15 billion, we are at about 10%. This is the size of the virtual production uh, market. Now, it may seem high, but I think uh, the films that are really expensive and the films that are really uh, kind of high profile are the ones that end up going for virtual production, which is why, uh, you know, the amount is so high, in my opinion. Okay. So, folks, remember, that when we talk to Chaitanya, he can never forget the word accounting. Let me introduce Chaitanya Chaitankar to you. Chaitanya is, he's got such a long and so many titles that I have to actually read my sheet and see what is he, you know. He is the vice president, business head, CTO and head of emerging technologies at Whistling Woods International, which is among the top 10 Film Production Higher Education Centers in the world. So folks, please give a round of applause to Chaitanya. And why I mentioned accounting was, why? Because he started his career as a bean counter. And I can't imagine this guy, he's talking in terms of, you know, virtual production and VR, AR and all that kind of a thing. Man, this is fabulous. Now from Chaitanya, I will also introduce the next speaker, who is Shaji Thomas, who is the Regional Head of Technology Asia Pacific at Technicolor. He is what we would call as an industry guru. So please give a round of applause to Shaji. And today we are going to discuss is looking at virtual production from academia and from industry perspectives. Let's go across to Chaitanya first for academics. So Chaitanya, you have been making, you and Whistling Woods have been making waves. Man, what is happening in virtual production? And what is Whistling Woods? Can you tell us something about that? So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Pradeep, for that intro. So, Whistling Woods is, uh, I mean, we'd like to believe that we are India's premier film and creative arts institute. Uh, we have been rated as one of the 10 best film schools in the world, like you said. And our goal, uh, ever since we started about 15 years ago, was actually quite simple. Our goal was to make sure that our students continue to be the next generation of content creators in the industry. So 
anything that the industry does today, our students should be uh, ready to do it, but they should also be six months to a year, if not more, ahead of the industry. They should know a little bit more. They should be able to do a little bit more. They should be exposed to a little more. And as you know, in that effort, in that attempt, we have set up quite a few technology development labs on campus, the latest of which is the uh, emerging media lab that we have, which um, is about four and a half years old now. The first three years or so, the lab focused heavily on cinematic virtual reality which is uh, fiction and non-fiction narrative content creation for 360 video. And now we have uh, moved on to virtual production and it's uh, two uh, aggregate elements of volumetric capture and photogrammetry. And that's where we are. We've, uh, we've done a first uh, kind of first phase of our uh, curriculum and virtual production education research and development is done. And what I'd like to do is, uh, you know, just take uh, everybody through what our approach has been and how we have tackled and approached the field of virtual production. Fabulous. Uh, but just at one moment, I want to stop you. You mentioned that you want to be ahead by one or two years ahead of the industry, which is absolutely fabulous. Normally, what I find is that higher education institutes are either, you know, about 15 to 20 years behind or they are 15 to 20 years ahead. But lovely to see that you're very much in sync with the industry. Okay. Yeah, yeah you. absolutely. So all our faculty, everybody, uh, you know, people who hire from us, we've created this nice ecosystem where they come in and kind of give us good insights and we reach out to them on a pretty regular basis. So let's talk about virtual products. Um, What, uh, what, what I essentially want to talk about is this slide that we, uh, that we kind of saw earlier, which gives us a good idea of how the market is likely to grow. So uh, we know that it's at about a billion and a half, but the, the way to look at this is it's actually going to be almost 5 billion in barely six years from now. And that's what uh, everybody needs to be geared up for. All our students, the industry, everyone, because whether you like it or no, it's going to happen because virtual production does add a lot of value to content creation. Right? So the first question that you know students ask us and we ask ourselves is why virtual production? There has to be a good reason why we do anything. The way that we look at it is that VP does two things. One is it allows us to do things better, more efficient and cheaper than previously done. So it allows us to create content better, faster, cheaper, and it also allows us to imagine content that we would not have been able to imagine if we didn't have virtual production at our disposal. And that's kind of the baseline from where we start. So how do you approach, how have we approached virtual production academics? We've looked at it essentially as transitioning from known pipelines of content creation to virtual production. We've done a disaggre disaggregation of the entire pipeline or ecosystem of virtual production. And we worked backwards from a lot of finished products to enable students to see what the finished product is, what the final shot is, and how has it come together. So they get, when they are looking at each individual piece of VP of virtual production, they know what role each part has played, what role has uh, photogrammetry played, what role has volumetric capture played, what role has camera tracking, the game engine, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And the key thing that we are also currently teaching them is to understand the difference between full CG virtual production and in-camera visual effects. So, you know, in a nutshell, what is virtual production? So it's essentially reimagination of the entire filmmaking pipeline to do in the virtual world, what has been done in the live action world for hundreds of years. Oh, rather 100 plus years, not hundreds of years. So these are the two production pipelines as they exist today. We have a live action pipeline, which has some amount of animation and VFX that we include. Uh, the workflow uh, remains pretty much the same as uh, in both the pipelines. So the other pipeline is the CG heavy pipeline. With one exception is that the edit VFX aspect is done much earlier 
in the entire full CG pipeline because you know it it does cost a lot of time, money, energy, effort to uh, animate or to even create one extra frame. So you don't really want to cut out anything, which is why you want your editing and your VFX uh, pre prod pre preparation to be really really strong. So these are the two pipelines as they exist today. And this is the virtual production pipeline as is reimagined. Where at a short level, at a scene or a short level, you essentially break apart the shot into the action asset and the world. And the action asset is anything that changes on screen. Um, so, you know, which may include uh, sets that go get destroyed or that sets where uh, digital characters interact with them. Uh, it's also the live action uh, part of the content. It includes uh, volumetrically captured uh, live action assets. It may include animated models. It may include mocap assets. And the world is the environment uh, which where your point of view of looking at the environment changes, but the environment as such doesn't change too much. Right now, your environment can be a video as well. So there is a play out that happens. But in a sense, what the, the world is, is that it's either a real set, a physical set, where you have both live action and CG assets, or it's a virtual set. It's a virtual world, which can be a set created using photogrammetry. It could be a 360 photograph that you're replacing a, a green screen or you're projecting on an LED. Or it could be a plate. It could be a matte painted or uh, you know photographed plate, which is being used. Or it could be a blended, uh, which is a combination of real and virtual. And this all then sits on a bed of a gaming engine, uh, which is virtual production enabled. And then uh, you kind of bring in the elements of camera tracking, motion tracking, object tracking which allows us to blend the real or the live action with the virtual and uh, show strong elements of uh, interaction between them, almost to a point of being photorealistic. It is actually photorealistic. And then this can be used to create three output formats. It can be a standard flat screen 2D, 3D video. It can be a 360 VR video, which is a 3 off video, or it can be a volumetric six degrees of freedom uh, virtual reality experience. So phase one, we are focusing on full CG um, virtual production plus, uh, you know, where the output essentially goes into monoscopic or stereoscopic flat screen content. And that's how we've approached it. So first thing you do is you have to disaggregate the elements of virtual production. So talk about photogrammetry separately, talk about volumetric capture separately. Now, uh, to this audience, I don't need to explain what these two things are. They, uh, you know, you guys are well aware of what wall cap and uh, photogrammetry is. And phase one, which is full CG virtual production, is essentially a complete in-game engine shot taking. And phase two, which we will start doing, is in-camera VFX, which is doing everything that we were doing in the gaming engine with real-time live action. Uh, assets uh, or real-time live action actors as well as real sets. So what I want to do is to just uh, show a few shots that a different kind of virtual production shots that we have done, each with specific goals. But before I actually get to this, uh, Pradeep, you know, what I would like you and Shaji to do is also talk about the industry perspective. So we'll get a good sense of what the industry is doing with uh, virtual production. And then we can I can show you what we at the institutional level are doing uh, with some of the content that we've created in the lab and how we have worked backwards to teach that to students. So uh, absolutely. A couple of questions which are coming to my mind before I go to Shaji is that as we are seeing that when it comes to virtual production, the two legs are technology and creative. Now, how do you focus? What is your focus in the education, uh, higher education institute? Is it 50% on technology and 50% on creative? Is it still more on creative and little bit of technology? Okay. And when the graduates who are passing out, are they fully technically competent to dive into all these gaming engines and everything else? Okay. 
So uh, the way we look at it is all pieces of content sit on three legs. There is the uh, art and craft uh, with a strong element of narratology built in, which is the storytelling uh, skill. Then there is the tools that are at, uh, at your disposal, uh, which in you know, which is in live action filmmaking are a particular set of tools, camera lighting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the third is to put this together. So all the technology, all the talent, all the art craft at a, a economic model that makes sense. Because, you know, films don't fail, budgets fail. And you don't want to create content at uh, uh, where it's just economically unviable. And those are the things that we keep in mind. Everything starts with the idea. Everything starts with creative. Everything starts with the narrative. Because without that, it's just a bunch of computers and a bunch of zeros and ones that achieve nothing. So the way we look at it is everything starts with the idea and then students are told, you know, there is a, a, a live action tech workflow and there is a virtual production tech workflow. You can choose whichever the one, whichever is the one you want. And, you know, rather more than choose whichever one, we will teach you both. And then you can decide to pursue it going out into the industry as, as the, the way that you like to do. Now, I loved it because you introduced a third leg of the business case. And that I couldn't agree more. I know that you've got a couple of more points, but let me move across to Shaji for the timing. Shaji, you are an industry guru. Will the real Shaji please stand up and tell us who you are and what does your company do? Okay. Uh, thanks for the intro and uh, having me here in this interesting discussion. It's already started becoming interesting. So first about the organization I work. So Technicolor has been more than 100 plus year in the industry and we are we provide multiple services across multiple uh, domains in the world. So there's two business units which we call connected homes and home entertainment. That's mostly on the manufacturing, distribution of various gateway broadcast devices transceivers, IOTs, Wi-Fi. So that's one part of business. The other part of the business where I am part of, which we call it technical creative studio, is where the creative contents are created. So we create visual effects, VFX, animation, and gaming content for all stream of distribution. We have around eight to nine brands across in the organization, which has a different specialization. So giving some example, having few examples around, MPC Film is one of the pioneers for long format visual effect films like Langal, Jungle Book, Lion King, Justice League, etc. The other brands like MPC Episodic, Mr. X, who are mostly in the episodic streams for OTT platform. And then there are two business units, which is MPC Advertising and Mail Advertising, which is for advertising sector. Then there is an animation sector who creates animation for episodic and also create animation for feature film. Then there is a games division, which creates uh, gaming content for all the top games, which is there. So that's what organization, what we do. The essence is the same. We create content in different medium for different distribution across. So my role is uh, I manage the technology infrastructure and operations for technical for Asia Pacific. That's where my role stands in. Now coming to virtual production. So you are also the technology guru or the equivalent of CTO for the media and entertainment part of the business. Now, what is happening in virtual production from an industry perspective? All these hairy fairy figures which Chaitanya is showing out, is that actually happening? I would say yes. And the amount of growth which we have seen specifically for, we can actually the, let pandemic take the credit of the growth in the virtual production, which, which is actually a truth. Uh, and as we are speaking, I'm sure all the studios are doing some innovations and R&D across virtual production, which has been the case for us also. We started little back. We didn't really wait for the pandemic to come in. We started back in 2014 with Jungle Book, where the first virtual production uh, was set up for us. And the entire shot and sequences for Jungle Book was done. Then we did Lion King, then one and only I once. Now, most of the thousand plus shots goes to the virtual production process for us. So it, that has be, become a reality, mainly in the film sector. Episodic, it's picking it up. Uh, for games and advertising, it's a different use case, but they are also picking it up very fast. Anything that you could showcase to us? 
I can actually show a video which uh, so everybody talks about a live action set and everybody talks about a virtual production set and we all speak about different words right but I can show a video which is actually showing a virtual production set how does the actual set looks like and maybe uh, I can later talk about where the difference is and what different tools are there. Yeah, I would love it. Share my screen. When we thought, how are we going to approach Lion King? We knew yeah. we needed to do something new, completely new. And we had the idea to do this in virtual reality. Take the tools of virtual reality and apply those to filmmaking in a way that's never, filmmaking in a way that's never been done before. We built a video game the purpose of which is to make a movie. Inside that video game, instead of cars and guns and points being scored, we've got cameras and lights and lions. So we go inside the volume, which is this technology blank space, this space that's filled with grids that hold virtual reality sensors, things that tell the computers where virtual cameras are in space or virtual steady cams or virtual dollies or virtual cranes. These all look like and feel like real filmmaking equipment, except there's no camera attached. There's just a sensor that says, hi, I'm a camera. I'm over here. I've got a 50 millimeter lens on. I'm looking downward at 20 degrees and there's a line. And it's just as if you're playing a video game, except instead of controllers, and we do use controllers at times, we're using tripods, we're using wheels, we're using steady cams. So we're giving the filmmakers all the analog tools that they're accustomed to. Their instincts are reliable, but the output is all through this real-time game engine. Yeah, let's just back up the animation. You need to be a hair lower, though. All right. There you go. Let's do it right there. I'm listening to this uh, video or watching this video, uh, it could almost aware that this is somebody from IBM who is doing it rather than some film production happening or content creation happening. So I suppose the first question which comes to my mind even before you go further is that what is the mix of technology and creative in this? Of course, I'm not talking about the third leg which Chaitanya talked about business case, which is of course the paramount leg. But going on the you know basis that this is a viable business entity and then the balance between creative and technology what are your thoughts uh, in this particular area where the virtual production or virtual production set is that is mostly around technology so it's it's an implementation and uh, implementation of technology and integration of the workflow tools emerging technologies uh, and the workflow tools according so that that's where the technology plays in across there so the initial, it's all the setting. It's like if you set up a broadcast studio, so you have to get all the technology piece together to set up the first stage. So the stage setup integration is all a technology piece. And after that, it's all the creative. So there are some areas where from a normal traditional workflow, it has moved to virtual production workflows. The technology plays a role on integrating that first phase. After that, it's mostly the creative thing. There's some roles which is extremely important, which we call this as a TDs, technical, di technical directors. They play a big role here on virtual production. There's a lot of who had an operational experience on the sets. How do you handle the camera? How do you handle the lights? So that, that experience plays a good role. And most of the supervisors in the leads actually you see the stage, they have made themselves so, so technology savvy, savvy in such a short time, I think that that made the big difference throughout. So, I, another question, you know, which is uh, to my mind, I can see the need for academia to reach out to industry because they want to get, you know, their students to be aligned to what is the need of the industry. But do you as industry go back to academia or to Whistling Woods when you have a problem? It's both directional. I would say it is generally both direction. Anything which we create, we need hands and brains and creative, creative minds to make it work. Right, and that is not something you can always uh, train somebody, and it takes some time. So that's where we highly rely on the the academy partners uh, like Whistling Wood, where the trained artist comes in. They get they gen they generally get. We run our own academy. So even if it's an experienced or trained artist, they come, they understand our pipeline and process, and from there it starts up. So it's both way direction. So we create, we probably would create a demand for the market and probably the supply. Uh, it's a bad name on the artistic world. Probably the right artistic uh, brain and hands comes from the Institute. Yeah. 
love it. You know, if I were to listen to both of you, it's like, ah, oh, we are such a nice, hunky dory world, you know, both working in sync. But anyway, let's go back to Chaitanya and Chaitanya. Now, I, do you want to showcase something to us in virtual production? Yeah. Um, so, but before I do that, you know, I just want to add a, a thing to what uh, Shaji was talking about was um, the, the creative aspects right, is something that is irreplaceable in the industry, in the content creation industry. I mean, yesterday, or, uh, you know, yesterday, there was a particular way of making the content. Today, there is a particular way of making the content. Tomorrow, there will be another way of, of making content, right, with the brain computer interface and etc, cetera, etc, cetera, growing tomorrow, you may be able to project uh, your visualization and you know you, you may be able to take data out of the imagination center of your brain and project it onto uh, you know convert it to zeros and ones to show people as well in which case you don't need real camera you don't need anything you just need a, a brain computer interface right but it still needs the original creativity which is why it's so hard which is why it's so difficult which is why not everybody can do it right which is why when John Favreau does virtual production it looks different from when somebody else does it, which is why, uh, you know, he's uh, people like him who have who are essentially traditional hardcore filmmakers, storytellers, and can make as low tech movies like Chef, also go on to make complicated films and series like Mandalorian or, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, I'm a fan, so. <laughs> so, um, the, the, you know, it's really, it really comes from imagination and from, from narrative, which is what we try and tell students as well. Don't get lost in the computer. Don't get lost in the technology. Don't get, don't work for technology, make technology work for you. Right? And that can only happen when you imagine and, you know, you are the creator and the technology is not the creator. So now that I've spoken about that, let me just show you some of the things that, some of the shots that we have taken um, I mean, we've taken hundreds of thousands of shots, but uh, some that we took with specific goals in mind and specific focus, uh, just to demonstrate the the potential of full CG uh, virtual production. And we used we did it using both Unity and Unreal. Um, so let me show those. You can see my screen. Yes, we can. So. There are uh, seven different types of shots, and I'm going to talk over them when they play out. So we will. Um, so this is our latest uh, reel that we did. So the first one is very simple, which is a standard video shot uh, with drone, where the human that you see is volumetrically captured. The light is created in the game engine. It's a virtual light. And this particular shot was done on Unity plus After Effects. So it's a simple, uh, you know, backward uh, tracking drone shot where everything except the human and the light is real. And it's blended in here also, apart from the human and the light, everything is real. And it's created in such a way that, you know, it gives a good example. It's a good uh, example of how uh, a simple shot can be enhanced using virtual production. Like, for example, to shoot an old man walking in a pine filled forest, I didn't have to go there. Neither did the old man. We just sent a simple drone team to take a few drone shots of trees. And then everything else happened in a 10 by 10 uh, studio where we volumetrically captured the person and then brought everything into a gaming engine. Same thing here. You know, a whole big massive crew of 100 plus people didn't need to go to this hay field or to this, you know, fog filled uh, space. So it's, it, it really talks about how simple shots can be made easier, cheaper, faster, and more flexible uh, using virtual production. But it's not just that, right? The, the next shot is, um, is actually a, a one minute plus long single take, which is only possible using virtual production because of how complex, it, complex the shot is, right? So this is a photogrammetry created uh, set of a house uh, where we are starting off almost at a 
you know, a, a, a thousand feet high level drone shot. And then it kind of goes all the way to waist level of a shot. So, you know, you start from the sky and you get into the house, you're rotating it on, uh, you know, on, on one axis while you are moving lower. Now to take such a complex shot in live action would be really hard. Now we have the same volumetrically captured asset and we're you know going to track in now the camera the virtual camera is actually going to move in between the human and his stick which is which would almost be impossible in a if we were doing it in live action using a drone then we the, the virtual camera actually goes through the wall which is again not possible in real life right and the child that you see is also uh, created using uh, virtual production uh, using volumetric uh, capture and you know it's moved from a, a a top shot drone shot to a tracking shot the same camera now gets mounted on a quarter um a quarter rotating track and you know it changes from multiple perspectives so you know a, a, a shot as complex as this can only be possible using virtual production the next one that i want to show is a uh, is that same is the same shot of you know like you saw that house that was lit for night the same shot in a simple pullback lit for day and the reason why we can do it is because the the house itself is a photogrammetry captured so is neutral to light so it's a simple pullback shot of all the trees around the house and the driveway and we are moving into the house as if it's a you know, a, a daylight shot. Now, this is a very simple shot, which otherwise would have been really complex. This is a, the next shot is a full CG, almost mishmash, where we decided that we will put everything uh, computer generated that we can put in on top of the uh, Unreal Engine, as well as a walking human, as well as take a tracking shot, right? So here I actually want to play the view of the video. So this is a mine in uh, of the the, the, dead, the old unused mines of Goa, where uh, they have been photogrammetry uh, captured to create an asset, and then we've got the human walking on them. Okay. Um, this, yeah. So in this one, we've got everything in this shot that we are uh, that you are about to see so in this shot we've tried to include everything possible that is cg the idol on the top left which is breaking apart that's a model uh, also the guy pointing is a model the world is a photogrammetry captured uh, world uh, the grave is individually captured the you know that edifice that's breaking apart at the back that is individually captured the idol you see on the right is individually captured and it's all put together on unreal uh, the person walking obviously is volumetrically captured and the light he's carrying is virtual so you know this is a, a, a kind of example of how multiple shots can be taken um, and this is done at a very academic level. To create this, it has cost us almost nothing. I love this because, you know, it showed different types of possibilities and the different usage of different uh, engines. So I think this was uh, brilliant. Now, I have one more video to showcase, which I'll showcase later, which is, which actually talks about the efficiency and the cost factor. Now, you know, in, in, in Indian films, in Indian uh, movies a lot, there is this whole hero reveal shot, right? Where the lead actor is revealed in different ways, right? Over the shoulder, you know, it starts at the feet and kind of moves up or there is a slow tracking, etc., etc. So what we've done is we've had this, this, this old man walking in, a, in an animated world, in a CG world created in a gaming engine. And then we've done... We called four separate DOPs, students, and gave them access to uh, virtual cameras in the gaming engine and told them, go wild. If you have to do a hero reveal shot, 
how would you do it and we actually have four very distinct very different shots that students have taken of exactly the same walk in the same world which create four very different outputs right so it's a very it's a one and a half minute shot so i just want to play that let's out let's have a look let's have a look the q and a just play that out yeah so these are four different walking shots with the photogrammetry captured world volumetrically captured human um the a virtual right and this is again created on unreal so this is a uh, the first one is a where the camera actually comes from within the ground within the floor right which is again not possible to do in in uh, live action and it's a side profile review so here what we've tried to do is there's a simple walk actually i'll just right the other uh, the next shot is again a simple uh, forward track shot where the asset is walking towards the camera and this is the big hero reveal where he's actually walking over the camera right and then the back and you see the nice moon and you know so this is a very uh, you know like you're you're building up the character a lot the the third shot is again this is a more intrigue you know if it was a suspense film and you had to reveal the 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 character so you know it's coming through very you know briefly the face is seen and then it's kind of more about the feet and the uh, and the light you know where it's you're almost building up to some kind of a suspense uh, bit right you know you kind of go back now this is again a, a simple uh, reveal shot so you have to imagine lots of dramatic music playing in the background and the camera is moving from the feet to the face so you know shaji is from the south of india so this is how you would introduce a, a rajnikanth or a vijay or you know i don't know a prabhas or something like that so this is what i wanted to show you got it uh, this is a uh, very nice perspectives now one of the question in the interest of time i have to ask this question because this is a burning question for me i am seeing a phenomenal growth in ott in india i am also seeing that the global delivery model which was that india becoming the production center for the world it used to happen in vfx earlier and the question which really coming to my mind is that do you see that in virtual production looking at both the domestic demand as well as the international trends india can become the center of a virtual production both your perspectives let me go to shaji first shaji what do you feel from an industry perspective he's actually doing it they're actually already doing it no I, they're doing it all right with a number of people are doing it but can we become the number one country for positioning of virtual production I'm not sure if we can become a number one there, but I'm definitely sure the kind of initiatives and application which is happening for virtual production now, the growth is going to be tremendous, and all the necessary things which is required to create a successful virtual production, apply it in the right way in the movies, and the directors and producers acceptance to have it inside the film is all there. So. So we, we have there, seen. Are, there are a couple of components. Yeah. One is that do you have access to some of the best technologies of the world? I would say yes. So software-wise and scale-wise, we we have a good exposure and good experience uh, in India. There's absolutely no. Um, uh, actually, good. You spoke about it. The other very important uh, part in the entire uh, work stream is a collaboration with the hardware partners. virtual production is very dependent on lot of hardware like the video wall the camera tripod sets and everything so that is an area which we have seen a tremendous growth we have been a little back from the western world little delayed there but last year we 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 found lot of partners lot of companies are actually investing a good amount to getting that thing done so there are three things one is the skills and the r&d required second is the exposure most of the visual effects studios are there in india and they are india is probably the largest production hub there are three three or four different partners who are actually investing on the hardware to make sure they have they building a right ecosystem for them and the the fourth element would be the the back end gaming engine 
so both unreal as well as unity they have a good team here every every day in the linkedin you will see variety of artists actually doing the fellowship program and getting a certificate so and that's that's a buzzword now so i'm pretty sure we will see a huge demand in like less than a year uh, that is uh, yeah. nice to hear that and anything that you would like to add to this chatanya yeah so i just want to show an image on about this right now the image quality is a little low but you'll understand what i am trying to say when you see it yeah so if you look at this right so this kind of talks about uh the four pieces of the ecosystem so there's i'm i'm going from right to left so there's post production there's production there's pre production there's conceptualization now if you look at india's vfx and virtual production is kind of a, a vfx linked service if you look at our vfx ecosystem we have been medium to high to high outsourcing hub for both international and domestic in post production in production we have now become we have reached high so we are one of the preeminent uh, outsourcing and kind of you know factory of the world when it comes to vfx both production and post production pre production we are emerging for international outsourcing and we are medium to high for domestic outsourcing it's really the conceptualization phase where we are emerging now this the first two conceptualization and pre production this is where we have added we have created a lot of strides in the past i i would say 2 to 2 and a half years because once you are able to deliver a complete pipeline end to end then you will have the world coming to you with just at at an idea level at a script level and you will be able to participate in the making of a movie or an ott series or whatever at a much higher value ecosystem right where you are not just doing job work but you are actually part of the ideation and the conceptualization and the planning of complicated vfx and virtual production production pipelines i think the last slide that you showed was a very good summation of you know what is happening and where are the strengths and where is the future heading towards now in the interest of time thank you so much there is so much to talk and i'm sure that we'll pick this up in our forthcoming series but thank you both of you for taking the time out and having this lovely chat with me ladies and gentlemen please give a round of applause to chatanya and to shaji for sharing some fabulous insights and with this this is pradeep from sydney signing off and have a lovely morning evening afternoon night whatever is in your part of the day take care bye for now thank you bye thank you bye